Hi, welcome to Encouraging Moments. I'm Tony Hare, and we're glad that you've taken out the time to join us today. We have a very exciting message just for you. So join us as we go into the message that's already in progress and be encouraged. ...that you're in and change your mind. If you would like to get a better paying job or if you would like to be employed at a, another company that you feel that your skills and talents would be better suited, change your mind about thinking about it and do something about it. We shared with you also last week that the mind is the unseen, most powerful part of our personality. If you want to do something about you, change your mind about you. Most of our issues today don't lie outside of us. Most of our issues today lie within the realm of how we think about us. And we look to blame others. We shared with you that the mind is the epicenter of performance. It is the center of performance. Nothing happens without the mind being involved. And we asked you a few questions. We asked you, what did you desire to become? What do you desire to do? What type of success do you uh, desire to have in this life that God has blessed you with? That is totally within your grasp. Yes. No one else controls that but you. And I share with you that a changed mind aligned with a will to do. So you got to have a changed mind, but you got to have a will to do. Amen. What's on your mind when it comes to you and the will of God for your life? You have to put it. To work. Most of the time, people don't want to hear that. You would rather me talk to you about what, uh, what the devil won't allow you to have. The devil has no power over you than what you give him. Amen. He is a defeated foe. Amen. He's defeated. And he operates. Right up here. If he can get you to think negative, you're going to do negative. Hang around the wrong people that aren't going anywhere, you'll be right there with them next year. Both of y'all will be sitting around talking about, well, you know, if this would have happened, then we could have done that. Not, not no more I last week because you didn't join me. Next year, we're going to have a bigger crowd. After a while, we'll have a choir singing the song. Amen. We have to consider who we are. And you have to give much consideration to how awesome you really are before you do anything. Because it's not about what you do. It's about who you are and who you serve. If God were to select you for a job or a task, what would be your response? Right now, in the present state of mind that you're in, and God asks you to do X, Y, Z, and you heard him clearly. Matter of fact, he came in, sat down beside you. What would be your response if God were to select you for a job required if job if God was select you for a job that required a committed person with a made up mind would you be up for the task would you place one foot in the water and have one on the shore would you tell him what well, I'm thinking about it would you say, yes, Lord, your servant hears you? 
Would you say, yes, Lord, send me? I want to talk to you today about the power of a changed mind, but I want you to consider this thought. Who? Me? Yes, you. Because a lot of times when God's talking to us about, and we hear him loud and clear, you know your mama voice, you know your daddy voice. You say you're in Christ, should we not know his voice? You say you're close to him. You ever been close to somebody in the natural and not recognize their voice no matter where they might be, over the phone, on the tape recording, wherever? How is it we have such a hard time hearing God? We want somebody else to confirm it. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, and that can happen. But, 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 but you heard what he said. Yeah, you, you, you heard him loud and clear. If God were ask you to, 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 to or select you for a task or a job, would you say, who? Me? I'm here to encourage you and to share with you today that God, through Christ, by the power of his Holy Spirit, is saying, yes, you. Yes, I chose you for this task. God has chosen each and every one of us to go ye therefore. Have you gone? Right now, if he were to ask you, how many people have you witnessed to about him, about his son Christ? What would be your response? Too many of us are on our knees still asking God to do for us. Just do for me. God is saying, for what? And he can measure how much you're going to do if he blessed you with what you want by what you're doing, but what he's already given you. Amen. Amen. What are you doing with that? Because he can measure how far you're going to go. He's giving you two arms, two legs. Cars to drive. How are you serving other people? How of a changed mind? Who, me, yes, you. God doesn't make mistakes when he chooses people. Nothing you can say to him will cause him to change his mind about you. And choosing you for the particular task. Today, God is making things happen using committed people who have a changed mind. God has communicated with people since the beginning of time. And the obedient ones have experienced the power of a changed mind. Today, you and I, saints, today, you and I are beneficiaries of individuals who changed their mind and did what God asked them to do. Yes. Consider Moses, the son of Joshebed and Amram. C consider Moses when God called him from the backside of the mountain when he was feeding the sheep of Jethro. Consider Moses when God said, I have heard the oppression of the people in Egypt. Yes. And God said, I have come down. See, that, that, that I might go, that I might deliver them. Yes. And then he went on a little further and he said, now God said, I will come down and, and that, that he has come down to take care of it. But he goes a little bit further and he says, come now, I will send you. Yes. God is sending us yes. to do. You don't believe me? Look at what the word of God says right here. Look at me at Exodus chapter 3. And in verse 1 he says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jephro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back side of the desert. Talking about the power of a changed mind. Who, me, yes, you. And he came to Horeb, the mountain of God, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. 
So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Very familiar uh, narrative here. But we're going to look a little bit closer here. He says, then Moses says, I will turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. How many willing today to say, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take the sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Now the Lord speaks, he says, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. And have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. I want you to know, saints, God knows your sorrows. Amen. So I have come down. And he says, so I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And to bring them up from the land to a good and large land. To a land flowing with milk and honey. To the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. A lot of Zites there. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression for which the Egyptians oppressed them. I want you to know now that God sees what you're going through. God knows what you're going through, ladies and gentlemen. God knows what you're dealing with. And just as he heard the prayer of these individuals, he's hearing your prayers too. And look at what happens here in verse 10. He says, come now, therefore. You know, earlier he said, so I have come down in verse 8 to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. But verse 10, he says, come now, therefore, I will send who? You to Pharaoh. Amen. That you may bring my people. They're my people, but I'm sending you. The children of Israel are out of Egypt. How many people want to come out of Egypt today? Well, I tell you right now, God has sent pastors all over the country. Amen. Churches have pastors and you have a pastor and he's trying to bring you out of Egypt. Do you want to come out? Yes, do you want to come out? If you want to come out, exercise the power of a changed mind. He says here in verse 11, but Moses said to God, you know, we always got something to say. We always got some feedback. Now, Moses had been in Egypt. He had seen what was going on with his people because, you know, Moses was a Hebrew. He was just brought up in Egypt. You know how the story goes. Everybody's very familiar with it. So Moses very familiar with what was going on, the oppression of the people. That's why he acted the way he did when he took out the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. Amen. He knew it wasn't right. But Moses was a little premature at that particular point in time. God hadn't called him to do anything. He did that on his own. But here we have God talking to him. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? That's not what God had. didn't ask him that. And God doesn't ask you, who are you, when he sends you. He already knows who you are. That's why he chose you. The question is, do you know who you are? You spend too much time doubting yourself, putting yourself down, measuring yourself up against Mr. Jones or Mr. Charlie. Have you ever looked in the mirror and seen how awesome you really are? Have you ever took some time to just sit down and, and clap your hands for yourself? Have you ever thought to bake yourself a cake? Throw yourself a party. Because God has chosen you to go out and do what he needs to be done. So Moses says, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? So he said, God said, I will certainly be with you. Do you believe God will send you somewhere and not be with you? Now, 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 I'm just going to say this. Because this is how I see it. 
Now, he said he would be with Moses. Now, there's a difference between with and in because he's in you. He with Moses, but he's in you. So you have the capacity and the ability to exercise the power of God according to the will of God for your life whenever you get ready to. So who are you? You're the one God chose for the job. And there's no job too big for you. No job too big for you to to do the job that God sent you to do. So he says here, when you have brought back the people out of Egypt, this is how you're going to know I sent you. You're going to serve God on the mountain right here where you at. Right here where you're talking to me now. You're going to bring them back here. And we're going to have a party. This is how you're going to know I sent you. But how many of you know that for some of us that ain't enough? We still have some more excuses concerning us. So Moses first says, who am I? Verse 13 says, then Moses said to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who that I am. Moses was giving God another excuse. What's your name? I don't even know your name. How can you send me? Who am I going to tell him sent me? God lets him know I am who I am. I am that I am. So what is your issue about letting everything that you come up against know who sent you? Trouble come my way. God sent me to handle this. Illness comes your way. Sickness comes your way. Lay your hands on yourself. Exercise your own faith. Wow. Wasn't that an exciting word that you just heard? Now that you've heard the word of God, we hope that you are encouraged to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Now, if there's anyone out there who is out of the ark of safety, you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Repeat these simple words after me. Father, forgive me of my sins. And God, I accept your son as my Lord and my Savior. Now, if you've said those words, you are now in the family of God. Now go out, find you a local church that you can join and fellowship with persons of like passions. And remember, be encouraged. 